Hey everybody, good afternoon. It's Friday and I'm gonna do a little coronavirus update today. Uh, today we're gonna to talk about vaccines. I've had a lot of people have, have sent questions in asking about vaccines, where do we stand? What does it mean? I don't wanna get vaccinated, there's a conspiracy. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, for those of you who have not watched this video before, my name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency physician, also board certified in obesity medicine. I work in the emergency department here locally uh, outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, and also run a functional medicine clinic. And we post videos about the virus, but also about wellness and weight loss and hormones and all kinds of different things. But today we're gonna be talking about the virus. As usual, we're gonna start with numbers. And so worldwide, 13.9 million cases, 592,000 deaths. Um, we've got 3.67 million cases in the U.S. Uh, went up by 77,000 today, which is a big number. 141,000 deaths here in my state of North Carolina. 95,000 cases, 1,600 deaths. More importantly, I think, or, or concerning, is that we had 1,180 hospitalizations directly for COVID-19 as the primary diagnosis in the state today. That's a record. We've never had that many cases. And as I've alluded to before, People that get admitted to the hospital now for COVID are probably a lot sicker than they were when the, when the virus first started because we are much better at, tre at treating them and we're also better at kind of determining who's gonna get sick and who's not. So if you're in the hospital for COVID, you're probably pretty sick. The other thing is that, you know, we've talked a little bit about death rates and I think you need to realize that when people die of COVID, they don't get admitted and die. They, they tend to get admitted for a period of time, maybe a week or so, they get maybe a little bit better and then they deteriorate, they end up in the ICU. If they end up on a ventilator, some of those people may, you know, if they're gonna ultimately die, maybe on the ventilator for weeks and weeks. So the death rates lag fairly significantly, maybe three to four weeks from the hospitalization rates. I can hear it's thundering outside, so I apologize, I got no control over that. Um, anyway, vaccine update. You know, what's going on with vaccines because we've talked about you know, if we're gonna get out of this stuff, we, we've gotta have an, a population that's immune. We think that that number is probably somewhere between 60 and 80% of the population needs to be immune to the virus in order for it to kind of peter out and go away. Um, that's what's called herd immunity. And there's two ways of getting to herd immunity. One is you infect everybody and let them get the virus and hopefully generate immunity. And there's been some studies out recently that raise questions about whether with this virus that's going to happen because there seems to be a fairly significant number of people that do not mount a really robust immune response, maybe not enough to get infected again. So if you have a mild case of it, you may be at risk for developing it a second time or maybe even a third time. We don't really know. Remember, we've only been studying this virus for about six months, so there's a lot we don't know, but that's a concern. So the next thing is that we can get a, a vaccine that stimulates a really profound immune response and provides immunity. That's the other way out of wearing masks and out of you know mass shutdowns of the economy around the world and everything else. We got two choices there. Either everybody gets infected and is immune or we have a vaccine. And, and folks, I understand that people don't like vaccinations because of a lot of crazy stuff out there, but those are our two options. So. When we're talking about vaccines, what do we know? Right now, there's over 155 potential vaccines out there. So when we talk about a vaccine, we're not talking about one vaccine. We're talking about 155 different labs, universities, companies who are working to develop a, you know, a, a, an effective vaccine. It may be that it turns out we get multiple effective vaccines, but there is now, when we talk about a vaccination, we're not talking about one particular one. So you know, there's lots of different companies and, and, and experts working on different ways of making this uh, virus. Right now, there are 135 studies that are preclinical, meaning they're sort of theoretical. They haven't been tested on anybody. There's 15 studies that are in phase one, which is like the most preliminary. You give it to a few people, evaluate response. 11 in phase two, where you, you, you know, you do more people, maybe 40, 50 patients. And then there are four that are entering phase three. And, and a phase three trial is something you know, tens of thousands of patients where you're looking for both safety and efficacy. Does the virus work and is it safe? There is one that's actually in limited use now that there's a Chinese company called uh, Can Sino Bio that has uh, a vaccine that has gone through phase one, two, and three, and now they're using it in a limited fashion with the Chinese military, but we don't know much about that. So the Chinese are giving it to, to people right now. 
The one you've probably you know heard about is Moderna, but there, there are a couple you know promising ones out there. I think we know need to realize that you know what is it, how long does it take to develop a vaccine on average? Well, normally, ten to fifteen years. You know, and we're and we're hoping to have one maybe in a year, maybe you know at the first of the year or something like that. Um, we know that it, it, about twenty five percent of of candidates that make it to phase two are able to go on to phase through three. But if you get to phase three, about 74, 75% of those actually go on to make a product. So the fact that we've got four in phase three right now, you'd think that at least one of those, you know, uh, uh, and, and possibly three, you know, two or three of them, or maybe all of them might go on. So the, the fact we've got four, um, four studies in phase three clinical trials is a very good thing. Um, Moderna has one of the ones that we've heard a lot about on the news, and they've actually shown pretty good um, neutralizing antibody production um, in their phase two trial, some, somewhat uh, more robust than people that have actually have infections. Some, they're saying maybe four times the antibody response to people that are actually infected with COVID. And then in their group that got a second dose with, they're actually seeing T cell response. T cells are these immune cells that actually can identify a virus and kill it directly, or more importantly, kill the cells that are infected. Because remember those cells get turned by the virus into factories for more virus. So if there's an infected cell, that cell needs to be killed and T cells play a role in that. Um, Pfizer has a, a candidate. There's one out of Oxford, uh, AstraZeneca and Oxford have another one that looks very promising, um, also going into phase three trials that also has been shown to um, elicit a T cell response as well as an antibody response. And so if you can get multiple immune responses from a vaccine, that's really, really good. Um, now, most of these things are, are you know, are, ver are victims of small sample sizes because they're phase two trials but you get bigger sample sizes when you move to phase three. Um, so let's say we get a vaccine and, you know, what does that mean? Well, you know, I think we'd be, you know, if it, if it happened before the first year, it'd be surprising. And then, you know, the vaccine needs to be mass produced and distributed. So even if a vaccine is available January 1st, we're, we're still probably talking six months to a year before, you know, everybody can be vaccinated, maybe longer, I, I don't know. One of the concerns is, you know, these surveys out that, you know, a third of Americans say they won't get vaccinated. Why is that? Well, because, you know, we've got social media, we got all these crazy things out there. We got anti-vaxxers, we've got conspiracy theories, we got people who are anti-science or anti-medicine, anti-authority that are saying they're not gonna get vaccinated. Well, if that's the case, guess what? We're gonna be stuck with this virus and you're gonna be stuck wearing masks and locked down for a long, long time because we are not going to achieve herd immunity quickly. That's for sure. We, we know there's been recent studies out in, in countries that have been hard hit that are only showing 5% of the population has been exposed to the virus. You know, we've got almost 4 million people, 3.6 million people have been infected in the US. Guess what? That's, a, you know, a tiny percentage of the population. It's, it's around, you know, a little over 1% of the population has been infected. It's a novel virus. If you get exposed, you're gonna get it. So that means that 99% of the population in the US hasn't had it yet. Now we think that the probably, the number of people have actually had it is a lot higher than the documented number. But even if it's a factor of 10, we're still talking 90% of the, of the population has not been exposed to it yet and has not gotten it yet. And to get herd immunity, 70% of the population has to be exposed. And you know we're looking at 140,000 deaths in the US at at one percent, or you know, potentially ten percent, all told, then you know, multiply that by ten to get to one hundred percent, and you can talk about you know, over a million deaths. So we've got to decide what we want to do here, um, in terms of the virus and in terms of vaccines. The vaccine is the only way we're going to get to a point where we can let down let down these these lockdowns, and you know, it's it's going to be individual choices. But if you don't get vaccinated, and we don't, then don't expect to have to stop wearing masks anytime soon because unfortunately we're going to be stuck with this virus you know pandemic for a long long time unless we achieve herd immunity some way um i think that we have to think about you know what is going to 
to move the economy forward, move our people forward. You know, the vaccine needs to be proven to be safe. It needs to be proven to be effective. Um, again, I reiterate, there's there's multiple vaccines going on. So people are saying, oh, Bill Gates has developed this vaccine and it's going to do all this stuff. We're not talking about one vaccine. We're talking about 155 different vaccines that are being worked on right now. And we don't know which one of those is going to be effective. And it may well be that you have a choice of multiple vaccines as long as they work. Um, the next video I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the current treatments, what works, what we think might work, um, what's on the horizon, what has been shown not to work. And I think we'll, there's quite a few drugs that have been studied, are being studied. There's some interesting things, monoclonal antibodies and, and convalescent plasma that we haven't talked about in a while. And so that'll be um, what I'll talk about next, maybe this weekend or Monday. Um, I talked about doing a Facebook Live and it just didn't happen. I've been so busy and I haven't been able to coordinate with other doctors, but we will do that um, hopefully next week. So in the meantime, I hope everybody has a great big, uh, great weekend. Um, I, I know it's gonna be hot here in North Carolina. Hopefully everyone will be safe. Um, as usual, wash your hands, look out for yourselves, look out for those around you, look out for everybody else, wear your mask, come on. It's, it's a minor little inconvenience and it may save somebody's life, who knows. I will talk to you soon, have a great evening.